Uh, today we are going to continue with the North Carolina Ready End of Grade Assessment Mathematics for 6th grade and this time we're going to focus on some of the uh, geometry questions. So the first one we're going to start off with is this one here. So you always want to read the question and see what the purpose is. So the Wilsons want to put an outdoor carpet on their porch. How much carpet will be needed for their porch? So we see that this is an irregular shape. Um, and since it is carpet, we know that we're going to be covering the inside of it, so that's going to be area. So for this one, you want to make sure that you cut it into two shapes that we are familiar with. And for me, I'm going to cut it into a square and then a rectangle. Got my two shapes here. So you want to be careful with these and make sure that you are picking the right numbers because there's a lot of extra numbers here that we don't need. So I'm going to start with this my square here and I know that to find the area we're going to do length times width and I see that my length times width are 6 times 6 and that's going to give me 36. Okay so I'm just going to put a 36 in there uh, and then this one over here I also have a rectangle so I'm going to do area and again length times width or base times height same difference. Uh, we've got a 12 and we've got a 6. We don't need to worry about this 12. We're just going to do 12 times 6. So we've got 12, and we've got times, and we've got 6. And when you multiply 12 times 6, we are going to get 72. Okay, so I've got my 2 there. And then in order to get the area of the entire thing, we need to go ahead and add them together. So we're going to go ahead and add our 36 plus our 72. And that's going to give us a total of 108 feet squared. And I see that that answer choice is there. So we're good to go with this one. Okay, so if you have an irregular shape, just go ahead and cut it into two shapes that you know. And away you go. Okay, this one we're talking about volume. So if you remember, the formula for finding the volume of a rectangular prism is length times width times height. And the numbers are there. And this is a calculator active question. So you, this really tests whether or not you know how to put stuff into the calculator. So you want to multiply your 2 times your 1 and 1 fourth times your 1 and 1 half. So remember, if you get any improper fractions, you need to go ahead and change it into a mixed number. And then if you got anything that needs to be reduced, that you simplify it down. So when you do all those, and all you got to do is multiply these three numbers together, you're going to end up with 3 and 3 fourths. All right, so all you got to do for these is just multiply. All right, so this is very similar to the first one we went over. We've got a funky dunk shape, and we need to get it into something that we know. So be careful, because it's easy to see that you've got a triangle and a funky shape here, another triangle. But try to look bigger into shapes that we know. I'm going to cut this into two shapes, and I see that it is a triangle. And the other shape that I see is a parallelogram. Okay, so in order for me to get the base and the height for all of these, we need to make sure that we are counting uh, the distance between the top and the bottom, and so on and so forth. So we know that our area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2, or half the base times height. Base times height divided by 2. Again, if you use half the base times height, it's the same thing. You do whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm going to do divided by 2. So for our triangle, I need to make sure I'm getting the base and the height. So I see for here, I'm going to count from here to here. And it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 across. So that's my 5. And my height, I'm going to count from here to the tippy top here. And I see that I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then we know side by side is multiply. We've got divided by 2. I'm just going to go ahead and do my order of operations and go left to right with multiplication and division. And I see I have 20 divided by 2. And that's going to give me a total of 10. So I'm going to write that on the inside. Okay, real quick, a common mistake is people forget to divide by 2 with a triangle. So let's not fall into that gap. Okay, we're going to deal with our second shape now, which is a parallelogram. And if you'll remember, the area of a parallelogram, very much similar to a rectangle, is just base times height. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We need to figure out how wide the base is. I'm going to go from this end to this end. And I see that it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five across for our base. And for the height, I just want to know how tall it is. So from here down to here, if you can imagine an imaginary line, we've got one, two, three, four. So we're going to do base times height, and that's going to give us 20. I'm going to write that on the inside. And then because we want the shape of the entire shaded area, we're going to go ahead and add these together. So 20 plus 10 is going to give us 30. Okay, so it's 30 units squared. Great. Okay, let's try the next one. Okay, so Abby's making a decoration. When folded, the direct decoration is a triangular pyramid made of four congruent equilateral triangles. Approximately, what is the surface area of Abby's decoration? So again, we're doing area. It's surface area, because if you fold this up, you get a 3D shape in area. Also, what's important here, it says four congruent equilateral triangles. So congruent means the same, and equilateral means equal. So that means all the sides are equal, all the triangles are equal, everything is the same. So these two measurements alone is enough to get us there. So quick reminder that for area of a triangle, we're going to do half the base times height or base times height divided by 2, whichever you prefer. I'm going to do the divided by 2. Okay, and this time we have a decimal, but that's okay. Okay, so our base for this one is going to be 7. Our height for this one is going to be 6 and 6 hundredths. And we're still going to divide it by 2. So it's calculator active. Don't let the decimals scare you. It's not a big deal. So we're going to do 7 times 6 and 6 hundredths, and that's going to give us 42, 42. I'm going to go ahead and divide that by 2. And that'll give us 21 and 21 hundredths. Now that's only for one of them. Remember it said we had four congruent, which means they're all the same. So if we've got one at 21, 21, that means we have all of them at 21. Now it said approximately, so I'm just going to go ahead and round it to the nearest whole number. In this case, it'll round down to just 21. And if you add all four of those together, you end up with 84. Closest one to that is 85. You round it up a little bit, and that's okay. And we're all good. So to do the surface area, find the area of each individual shape and add it up. Okay, same thing. And net, we're going to do the surface area again. We're going to try and find the area. So you got to make sure what's going on with what. We have two triangles. We have a rectangle. We have to see what's what first. So I like to label my sides so I know exactly what I'm doing. And I don't confuse anything up. Let me get rid of that. Okay. And uh, we've got this is 3 inches. That's 8 inches. That's enough. So I'm going to color code this first. So I see that I've got a triangle. And these two triangles are also going to be congruent, which means the same. Then I've got this rectangle, which is an 8 by 10. But I notice down here, these ones are 5 by 10. So I'm going to swap colors for those. These are each 5 by 10. So because they're the same, I'm going to get them the same color. Okay, so now what we have to do is find the area of each of our shapes. So let's start with a triangle. Remember that area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2, or half the base times height. Uh, equals base height divided by 2. And we see that we've got an 8 for our base. We have a 3 for our height. So 8 and a 3 divided by 2. That's going to give us 24 divided by 2, which will give us 12. So in each one of those, I'm going to write a 12. Okay, so we've got a 12 here, we've got a 12 here. Okay, inside this one, we know that we have area equals base times height. And we can see that our base and our height are 8 and 10. 
So we're just going to substitute those in. And we've got a 10 for the base. We've got an 8 for the height. And that gives us a nice even 80. Okay, same thing for this here. We've got area equals base times height. This is a rectangle. And we have 5 times 10 for this, which is going to give us 50. And because the other one is exactly the same, I'm going to just go ahead and plonk in 50. So now we've got the areas for all of these. In order to find the total surface area, we just have to add these all together. So we're going to add our 12, our 80, our 12, our 50, and our 50. And that's going to give us a total of 204 inches square. So just be mindful. Make sure that you can see which one's supposed to go with which. Use the measurements they give you. And sometimes they don't always look the same, so you always want to go on the measurements. Okay, let's see what else we've got. All right, last one. Now we're going to do the same type of thing, except we're going to do it on the coordinate plane. So remember, for the test, they don't give you a coordinate grid. They just give you graph paper. So it is up to you to go ahead and mark these out. I wouldn't even bother putting the numbers. I'd just leave it blank. But make sure you've got your um, x-axis and your y-axis. So for this one here, I'm going to go ahead and it says... What's the area of the quadrilateral with the vertices? And it gives us all the points. I'm going to go ahead and graph those. So it says negative 1 and 0. So negative 1, 0. The next one says 2, 0. So I'm going to go over 2, 0. Next one says 2, 5. So we go over 2. And we go up 5. And our last one says negative 1, positive 5. So that gives us here. And since it's a quadrilateral, it said, I know it's going to have four sides. And I can see that it very easily has four sides. So we're looking for the area here. So I see that we're going to do length times width or base times height. And I've got it three across. I've got five up. Or if you count all the squares, either way, you're going to see you have 15 unit squares. Okay. So there's a couple more questions on the uh, practice exam that you can work on. And we'll go through those. And uh, I hope this helped. Thanks.